practical answers. You need a non-clinical family caregiver expert that the professionals turn to. You need David Levy. He is a family caregiver expert with 25 years of active experience with thousands of family caregivers. He can help you provide a better quality of life for you and your loved one. Contact David Levy at dlevy at caregiveredorg That's dlevy at caregiveredorg Or call 561-482-0086. And let's get your mental road to healing started. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Caregiver Reality Show, hosted by gerontologist and family caregiver expert David Levy, speaking on a topic that is not only a national problem, but an international one, and represents one of the biggest dilemmas facing us today, Alzheimer's disease and dementia. With no cure in sight and hundreds more being diagnosed weekly, Alzheimer's is more feared than cancer or heart disease. Join us as David Levy breaks it down and educates, informs, and explains useful caregiver strategies and techniques that 25 years of non-clinical family caregiving have taught him. You can listen or call in and be part of the show, 888-565-1470 to ask your questions. And now, here's David Levy. Good evening, Boca Raton, America and the world. This is the Caregiver Reality Show. We're broadcasting live from WWNN, 1470 AM in Boca Raton, Florida. Or you can see us live streaming on caregiverreality.com. Just type it in and click on Live Show. And we'll be right there uh, in living color for, uh, for all of our viewers. And if you want to call in with a question, it's 888 888- 565-1470. It's been a busy week. Uh, last week we discussed uh, whether or not uh, you're being observed, under observation or admitted, and that certainly brought out afterwards a lot of people that had no idea that they could be in an ER or even admitted into, or even in a hospital bed and not have been admitted into the hospital and start if you're over 65, the Medicare process or unhooking you from the possibility of having physical therapy or rehab because you never got your 72 hours in the hospital. But today we're back on the subject of caregivers. There was a report that came out from the Pew Association, PEW, which is pretty active in discussing caregiver issues. And one of the things that they noticed in doing their homework that since 2010, between 2010 and 2012, we've jumped from 30 to 39 percent of people in America that are caregivers. And so if you do the simple math, that's almost a 30 percent increase uh, in less than two years. And that number is going to grow and grow and grow. And uh, remember, our definition of caregiver is not a clinically trained individual. It's not somebody from a home health care agency. What we're referring to is a non-clinical, informal family caregiver. Mom, dad, children, aunts, uncles, whoever it may be, who's helping to take care of somebody who can no longer take care of themselves and do the things that they used to do. One of the big issues is as we see the increase in caregiving and realize that more and more of it's going home and i'll be discussing that in a moment because there was a very interesting report that came out on nursing homes that tie right into this but more and more uh, families are being tasked with the responsibility of being family caregivers the problem is nobody has bothered to educate them into what it takes and how you go about being a family caregiver all right it's not easy it's not intuitive matter of fact it's complex it's complicated and uh, not only is it confusing but it's what we call counterintuitive just when you think you understand what it is you're supposed to do things go the other way and uh, there's no predictability in it just uh, just you have to live it day at a time by the seat of your pants the best you can do is plan 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 and plan for the unpredictable so one of the best ways to do that is to sit down 
and take a good look at what it is you're dealing with both the person that you're taking care of and yourself what are your finances what are your legal documentation what is it that you need to know about the disease that your loved one has you're not treating it you don't need to be the doctor but you need to know enough about it that you can at least advise those who are treating your loved one clinically as to what it is that's going on and if you see things that need a change or you see things that don't make sense to you remember your gut instinct is usually the best determiner of what needs to be done if you see something that just doesn't look right it probably isn't all right so that uh, this is the responsibility of all caregivers one of the things that we'll see going forward uh, and one of the things driving the caregiving situation is twofold. Number one, the oldest baby boomers born in 1946 who are now 67 are rapidly retiring. Uh, and they, we uh, thought they'd stay in the workplace a little bit longer. They did a couple of years ago when the economy changed, but now they're retiring and they're adding to not only the load that we have on Social Security but they certainly are also availing themselves of what they're entitled to, which is Medicare. And so one of the things we have to be careful about is that with this incredible increase of people above the age of 65, is the thing that everybody keeps worrying about is how are we going to continue to fund Social Security, which is truly the backbone for most people's retirement, and how are we going to continue to give them the kind of health care that we'd really like to be able to enjoy both for ourselves and others when we've gotten to a point in the Medicare system where unless some of these changes that Obamacare, whether you like it or not, accountable care, um, and um, ACOs, accountable care organizations, who are the health care organizations that are making sure that the folks that are inside of their group, just like Medicaid Advantage and, and others, uh, are getting quality care, but are getting quality care at a price that everybody can afford. And so part of that issue is if you're only being paid for a bundle, that's representative of the care that's needed and over the course of whatever it is that's wrong with you or your loved one. Uh, everybody's got to make a buck in there. How do you divide it up? How do you make it work? And these are all things that we're going to see unfolding over the course of the next year or two. And even if we stop Obamacare, we cannot stop aging. We cannot unhook Medicare and we certainly cannot do away with Social Security. So those basics are there at all points in time, and we need to be able to recognize it because this is how this country will survive. One of the, one of the notable um, statistics that came out this week is that the birth rate in this country has started to drop and drop fairly dramatically. Well, once you stop having children, you stop having people that can enter the workforce in 15 or 20 years. And we have always financed Social Security and Medicare off the back of the workers that are working today by FICA and FUDA and other things that are taken out of your salary uh, and goes to pay for um, Medicare and Social Security. So one of the, the big issues that we also have to think about is now with the immigration issue at the forefront, these are the people, like it or not, that are working and in most cases are paying taxes and are keeping uh, the opportunity to fund Medicare and, and Social Security going. So whichever way you care to look at it, we need to keep a working economy in order to keep a retirement economy going forward and we can't lose sight of that fact um, one of the big points uh, that came out this week just as a comparative you know we're not the only country that's aging the world is aging and this week China not only are they having their issues with their economy but they have gone back and they have reinforced 
with the children in China that you will be fined or penalized unless you absolutely make sure that you visit and financially support your parents and your grandparents. Um, that's called filial um, piety or, or the opportunity for family to be responsible, filial responsibility. We have it in a few states in the United States, but China must deal with it because they have millions and millions of aging population. And if you recall, when Mao Zedong uh, made it one child 20, 30, 40 years ago in China, uh, it greatly reduced the amount of people that were going to be available to care for an aging Chinese population. So um, it's not just our problem, it's everybody's problem, but, you know, good luck with China. We have to deal with what's on our front doorsteps. One of the things that, um, that we want to talk about that is very interesting. Oh, I see we've got a caller on the line. All right. Um, go ahead, caller. Hello? Is that me? Hello. Is that me? That's you. That's you, oh, caller. Oh, hi. Yes, yeah, this uh, is Mimi from Boca Raton. Okay, Mimi. Oh. How are you? I'm okay. All right. And what can we do for you? I'm okay. I have a question. My husband is in um, a uh, nursing home. Uh, under um, Medicare and Medicaid, um, um, I guess Medicaid. Right. And I received notification that I have to select from several managed health care organizations. And I haven't the faintest idea of how to decide which would be best. Well, you know, that's an excellent question. And for um, our listening audience who may not know it, Starting on August 1st, they're taking the first 87,000 Medicaid patients and are moving them into a managed type care organization similar to what Medicare Advantage would be. Um, and one of the reasons that the state of Florida has agreed to do it is because the federal government has also agreed to pay all of the costs. Uh, for the first two to three years of managing the program. So that's a benefit in one respect, but we'll have to see where the cost aspects of it. But Mimi, your question's a good one. I believe there are in, are you in Palm Beach County? Yes. Okay, well, there are, I believe there are four providers in Palm Beach County. There's uh, American Elder Care, there's United, there's Humana, or maybe Coventry, I'm not sure, and a new one uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. Something like Sunshine, I think. Uh, it could very well be. Uh, it's a new player, or at least it's a player that has changed their name. I think that one of the ways that we have to uh, evaluate those programs are the same way that we've evaluated Medicare. We, we need to see, although recognizing that your husband is in a nursing home, which limits... Uh, who sees him because most of the time nursing homes have their panel of providers uh, that come in to see you in the nursing home so that you don't have to take a loved one out and your mm -hmm. medications are still for the most part covered because you have a gap uh, or excuse me you have a plan D under Medicare that pays right. for uh, medications so it's really going to be for a little while hit or miss as to who are the quality players. Now, we have names that we know, like United or Humana or Coventry or American Elder Care, and they've been active in this marketplace, but this is the first time that they, in a sense, are being capitated. They're being paid for managing a group of Medicaid patients for a fixed price. Now, remember, these are not not-for-profit organizations. They're for-profit, and Medicaid is difficult enough right now as a paying source without now putting in between it a for-profit organization. Um, well, that, that brings me to like a corollary question. Yes. Um, uh, if my husband is in um, a, a, a nursing home, mm -hmm. Can I still take him out on my own 
if I choose to, to specialists. You can take him out to see specialists and your own doctors, that's for sure. Many times, if they're in the nursing home and you want to take them out, you may need a referral because, especially in Medicaid now, they would be under this management group. Um, and so it will remain to be seen once these Medicaid organizations take over how easily it will be because you're outside potentially of whatever panel they may be utilizing but rest assured that you can still take them to whoever you want the issue is going to be who's going to pay for it and even though you have Medicaid which is basically paying for room and board um, Medicare is still paying for hospitalization and Medicare Part B is still to a great degree covering um, doctors. So, um, Mimi, you've asked a, a great set of questions, all right, but it's going to remain a little bit until we see some of these first uh, clients go into these organizations and they begin to recruit them, which is only a couple of weeks away. I mean, August 1 yes, is, right. the, is the start date. I got a letter that I have to uh, return with my choice because I have his... Uh, durable uh, power of attorney. Right. Well, you know, one of the things I would do if I were you is I would go and sit down with the administrator of the nursing home where your husband is because mm -hmm. obviously they too uh, are not going to find it easy to work with four different organizations for Medicaid and they may have determined based upon their expertise who they are going to use and for the moment that may be the simplest way for you to make a choice recognizing that just like Medicare and and other managed programs you will have an opportunity uh, to opt in and opt out at an open enrollment time but for right now I think the guidance of uh, the nursing home probably is going to serve your purposes the best because I just don't think even though we've seen some information from uh, the Agency for Healthcare Administration trying to define the programs that these Medicaid uh, panel programs are, are, are going to offer I think until we see them in operation it's going to be tough to evaluate them and uh, you it, ask it excellent question doesn't but doesn't affect it, their, their uh they're Part D prescription drug. Well, um, yes. You know, once again, you're going to have not. to determine, you know, if the medications that your husband is on are covered, you know, under that set of circumstances. If you still have a Part D, or if the organization is going to cover Part D, then one of the things you need to check is the formulary. What is it that that organization is willing to cover and more and more it's only generics and not a lot of branded drugs and so if you're on um, branded medication because generics don't work uh, that's going to be an issue that you're going to have to seriously consider understood all right understood. well I, okay. I thank you very much for the question it, it, it's a very timely one and one that we're going to have to start to deal with very quickly as more and more Medicaid patients are going to have to make the same selections you are Mimi uh, and starting in the next couple of weeks as they open enrollment and start to bring in those first 87,000 Medicaid patients on the way eventually to enrolling all of the Medicaid patients in the state of Florida but you know that's going to be a difficult process uh, people are going to have to learn new rules and regulations and uh, we're all going to be part of the learning curve but rest assured that I will be studying it on behalf of the listeners and my caregivers and I will do my best to bring you the best information that we have um, so thank well, you Mimi as, as for your one call of your caregivers. I think you do a fabulous job. Well, thank you very I, much. I appreciate that. I try and do the best I can, and um, and I thank you for your call. Uh, it looks like, um, Kenny, are we ready to go to a break? All right, we're going to a break, and when we come back, I'm going to include uh, a, an audio clip 
um, from a recent caregiver support group that uh, we filmed and uh, and put into production. And it's a very interesting question. I'll wait till you hear it, and then I'm going to deal with it. So uh, we're going to go to a break right now. Remember, it's WWNN 1470 AM, 888-565-1470, the Caregiver Reality Show. Thank you. Hello. Are you a family caregiver? Are you taking care of a spouse, parent, or loved one who can no longer care for themselves? Are you dealing with Alzheimer's disease and don't know what to do? Are you stressed, burned out, frustrated, and don't know where to turn? Have you realized that your doctor, lawyer, and mental health professionals don't have real practical answers? You need a non-clinical family caregiver expert that the professionals turn to. You need David Levy. He is a family caregiver expert with 25 years of active experience with thousands of family caregivers. He can help you provide a better quality of life for you and your loved one. Contact David Levy at dlevy at caregivered.org. That's dlevy at caregivered.org. Or call 561-482-0086. And let's get your mental road to healing started. As whether, whether he would be doing the right thing right. because his wife was still alive, although in very much incapacitated. Oh, yeah. uh, he wanted to know if it was all right to see somebody, to go out because he wanted company. Am I correct in uh, stating yes. this? And it turned out he was troubled. As whether, whether he would be doing the right thing right. because his wife was still alive, although in very much incapacitated. Oh, yeah. uh, he wanted to know if it was all right to see somebody, to go out because he wanted company. Am I correct in uh, stating yes. this? And it, it turned out he was troubled as whether, whether he would be doing the right thing right. because his wife was still alive, although in very much incapacitated. Oh, yeah. uh, he wanted to know if it was all right to see somebody, to go out because he wanted company. Am I correct in uh, stating yes. this? And it, it turned out... Okay, anyway, um, that piece of tape uh, didn't come out as well as we had hoped it would, but the subject matter that was being discussed there uh, had to do between two caregivers, one who had uh, recently lost his wife and uh, was beginning to start to see another person uh, to kind of fill some of that void in his life, and he was running into a problem because his children didn't think that he had waited enough time before he started to seek the company of somebody else. And I'm not even talking about sexually. I'm just talking about somebody to spend some time with. But somehow or other, the children knew better uh, than he did uh, whether or not that was a, a, an appropriate thing for him to do. And I, I have a comment about that. Um, w many years ago, when I was 28, I lost my mother and uh, to cancer and my father shortly after she passed away came to me and he said you know I'm lonely I had a great marriage with your mother and I really need to find somebody to help fill that gap and I said to him hey that's fine my sister came forward and said the same thing we weren't looking for another mother we were just looking for my dad to find um, some happiness and to begin to get back into living his life and doing things so we didn't have an objection but I find today as I run my caregiver groups and discover that many many children have a very different view of what their father or their mother ought to do following either the demise of their loved one their their the other spouse or where this tape was starting to go to was one of those caregivers has a wife who is now substantially advanced in Alzheimer's and so not only does she not recognize her husband but in the facility that she's in she needs to be constantly attended to and as a practical aspect of that um, he was introduced to somebody even though he wasn't really looking and the two of them have become I would say soulmates uh, I don't know 
to what extent the relationship goes, but both she's a uh, a widow of some five or six years, and uh, they were introduced, and all of a sudden he found somebody that he could go out and have a pizza with or do a little bit of traveling with, and um, his children understood much better, even though their mother is not gone in the sense of having passed away, she is beyond the ability to be that companion, that lover, that significant other person that you can share with and who he has shared with for 30, 40 years of his life. And so this is an issue that constantly comes up with the support groups and uh, is one that I think going forward we're going to find more and more is whether or not a person, a spouse, or a significant other is entitled to move on with their lives, certainly after their loved one has passed away, but what happens now that Alzheimer's and other dementias are so prolific and so pervasive that we now have people that are living their lives even though their spouse is alive, but they're truly cognitively not able to enjoy any of the benefits that they once had. And so going forward, this is going to be a subject matter that we're going to have to delve into. A lot of people call it an emotional divorce, and uh, it's getting more and more validity. Um, now, one of the things I wanted to get to, but it appears that once again we're running out of time. I got one minute, but I want to let you know that right now in Boston is the major international Alzheimer's convention. And next Monday, I will have Dr. Mark Brody, who is attending that convention right now, as my exclusive guest, who will be bringing back the latest information on what is and is not being done in the world of Alzheimer's. And you will hear it here first, because nobody else is going to have the opportunity to interview him before we do. So I think you'll find it interesting and informative, and let your friends know that uh, Dr. Brody from Brain Matters will be here with all of the latest on dementia and Alzheimer's. So remember, you're hearing it first on www.caregiverreality.com. We're on WWNN 1470 AM in Boca Raton, Florida. And I want to thank you, Mimi, for that call. And then next week, if anybody wants to speak to the good doctor, it's 888-565-1470. Good night, Boca, America, and the world. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I look forward to speaking to you next week. You have been listening and watching David Levy, gerontologist and non-clinical family caregiving expert. Visit our website at caregiverreality.com and hear and see unscripted family caregiver support groups discussing all of the questions that you have wanted to ask but didn't know where to turn. Tune in again next time for more updates and special guests who bring their caregiving experience to you so that you can deal with your problems and hear how family caregiving is affecting Americans just.